Sup nerds, I'm Tom. And I'm Aaron. And we're taking a look at Kalimala, a game that, you know, two years ago, I probably would have looked at this box, walked right on by it, been like, ugh, that does not look interesting to me at all. But it's actually really good. <laughs> Where are the dragons? <laughs> so as Tom alluded to, this is a very dry looking game for people who like more colorful, more Ameritrash kind of games. This is a typical Euro where it's in Europe and you're delivering things to other European cities and build like, it, that's it, it's a cube pusher. But it has some really interesting mechanisms and really interesting ways of changing every game so that it's every game is unique. The the scoring is unique each game. Well, the pattern in which it yeah, scores. The, yeah, yeah. Um and the action selection is kind of different every time. It's one of those games where you're going to spend a lot of time doing an action to collect resources and then doing another action to deliver those resources. So it, it kind of feels like, you know, it's just like, eh, okay. Yeah. But the things you do to actually do them are really unique. When you take an action, you place your disc between two action spaces and you get to take both those actions. If for some reason you can't take an action, you get an action card, which you can use later, which is a distribution of all of the actions. So, so you'll still get to do two actions in total it's at, just, at some point. Yeah, you're just you're delaying one of them. And you're not getting to choose one of them. Yeah, exactly. But then I say, okay, I want to take that same action. I'm blue. I come over here. I put mine on top of Aaron's. So what happens there? <laughs> you take those actions. And you're like, okay, I'm going to take this action. Is it that, that action? And then it comes back to me because I'm underneath him. I also get to repeat those actions. So it gets really, really epic. There's all this chain reaction. Next Third turn. Third player goes there. Red player. <laughs> it triggers for the red player, triggers for blue, triggers for yellow. Once the fourth disc is added, you'll trigger the top three, and then the fourth one, actually, that worker has been there a long time, and they're being promoted to city council, and they will get a seat in the council up here. And whenever a seat is assigned in council, that's when you actually trigger a scoring. scoring all the, all yeah. the scorings are on majority. Mm -hmm. Majority of, so like this this is the this tile here, and these are all shuffled and put out randomly, so the, the wood, it as it's who has you know, donated the most wood in this area up here, who shipped the most things out here, who's donated the most brick, who's has the most, who's given the most cloth in this area. So you look around and you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different areas. And you can say, and well, plus a few, a few more, but you can say, oh, well, I want to try and get majority in all those areas. You're not gonna, you're not no. gonna be able to get, but you wanna be on most of those areas. Cause even if you don't have majority, second and third place still get something. Mm -hmm. So you wanna diversify your portfolio as best you can while still dominating some. Mm -hmm. Because like uh, Jared, who, who was purple and he just, the very first thing he did, well within like the first couple of turns, he just put like six cubes in this one area and he like locked out the marble part and just put a bunch of cubes there and we were like, yeah, it's going to be really hard to fight that. Like, mm -hmm. we all, a lot of people were throwing a cube there just to get second, but they're like, nobody's going to fight for first place here. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to go somewhere else. And that dynamic is really fun because you're sitting there and you're thinking like, I can win everything. I want, I'm going to get, I want everything. You know, so you're doing your best to scheme and get points in every single area. And having the scoring track shuffled and laid out there so that you can see, okay, First we're scoring wood, then we're doing shipping, and then maybe, you know, it's one of the cities. You're like, you know, ooh, I need to make sure I've delivered to that city, so I need to build a house in that city and then deliver there. And if you can at least get one cube there in an early round, especially if it's like one of the, the first couple tiles, and then make sure it triggers before anyone else gets there, then you're going to score three points and just kind of notch it ahead. And... If players aren't paying attention and you can just sneak in and get one cube here, one cube here, one cube here, and just score those before anybody else gets there, you can take a big lead, which I've seen happen in a couple of games. A couple of games. <laughs> couple. The last game we played, Aaron's score ended around here, and I was all the way over here. But a big part of that was because I kept, I looked at like the early scoring things, and I was like, I, I, I was ahead at the very beginning because I kept doing that. Mm -hmm. And also... Another big thing is a lot of people weren't fighting me on things. Like, mm -hmm. you fought me on council seats here so I couldn't break ties. And there were a couple of times when somebody else was like, okay, well, I'm going to come here just to try and steal majority from you. Because, again, majority could be 
two cubes. Mm-hmm. That's not a lot, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but there was that the one guy who was playing red. He was just doing his own thing. He just kept like he had oh all he, the shipping. he had all the shipping, but then he kept shipping. And I was like, okay, you you won. Go go do something else. You know, you won that area. Go somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So my one kind of complaint with this game, and it goes for a lot of euros, is that all the resources are use this one cube. That's it. That's it. This is marble. It is brick. It is wood, and it is cloth. It just depends on where you place it on your character board, and where you place it on the actual board once you've shipped it or donated it or used it to make a statue. I understand why after playing it, like it would be really hard to be like, okay, I'm gonna collect wood, so let me get this cool little wood piece to put here, and now I'm gonna put the wood out here. Well, you're going for all these majorities, you're going for this area control of the certain buildings for the certain towns, and if you're just putting resources out there, they're not color coded, then it wouldn't really work. Well, you could have everybody's wooden bits could have little shapes of wood and brick and marble, but then they would just need to make a lot because they give you a bunch of cubes because this cube can be anything. You could mm-hmm. use all of these cubes for wood or all these cubes for bricks. Yeah. But it would have looked a little nicer. Yeah. It's just it's kind of the function over the prettiness of it. Like yeah, function over form. Over form. Yeah, that's Instead the word. Of form over function. Yeah. Yeah. So, once you get past that, this game is just so beautiful in the way that it, you know, with the that follow action, which kind of yeah. calls me back to, like, Tiny Epic Galaxies. It's or, not a follow action. It's like a force. It's like follow. a, I want to follow, so I'm going to put my thing here because you guys want that. So, if you want to take that action... I get to take that action too. Mm-hmm. That's I think that's what because in follow it's I'm gonna do this. Oh, you're doing that. Okay, I will also do that. Mm-hmm. This is saying I, I make the choice first, mm-hmm. and then you make the choice to uh, to to allow me to follow. If that makes sense, kind yeah. of. So it kind of uh, just depends on how you look at it. I'm looking at it that way. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, I've heard it both ways. If you actually want to dominate one of the areas, if you want to be if you want to ship lots of the cloth to the different ports, or if you want to deliver lots of the cloth to the different cities, you actually need to like have an extra layer of a thing you need to do. You have to build a building in the town you want to deliver, or you have to build a ship if you want to ship things. If you build more ships, you can deliver more goods. But if you're delivering more goods, you need to have more storage. So you need to build more storage to put the cloth in. The cloth is the only storage that you can upgrade. So the other the other the wood, the brick and the marble, you're you're limited to four, but that's what can really push you into this getting extra action cards in a way. Like if you if you come here and you're like, "Okay, I'm going to get, you know, a bunch of wood," and other people are coming to that area as well and they're filling your wood up for you, you know, you're not having to take those actions to get on your own. Your wood gets full, and then somebody else takes that action again. You're like, "Oh, well now I can't get wood because I'm full." You get this card, and now you're like, okay, cool. Now, on a later turn, I'm going to actually be able to do an action that I want. Yeah. And I just realized these the cards head. on top. I was, about, I was about to say, but those cards on top are important yeah. because these are, so we said things score in this track over here. Mm-hmm. Um, yes and no. You also get dealt two cards that are these, pretty much. Mm-hmm. It's it, not, not the obscure ones, like the most wood. It's really just the location. You get dealt two of them, and then you keep one, and that will score again at the end of the game. Four more points this time. Yeah. So not only do you know secretly that this place is going to be extra valuable, you know that this place is Isn't, garbage. Yeah. It's not going to score. So that extra sauce on this steak makes this game just... Mwah. Another little interesting thing they did to spice it up is everybody is dealt out some white discs which give you a double action. So whenever you place that disc, you take both actions twice and you can do them in however order you want you could take a a b b or a b b a you know just whatever order you need to kind of fulfill the goal that you're going for they do not re-trigger when other players play on them so it's just kind of like a good way to get everything you need once um you you know with a regular disc there's a possibility of getting it six times total you know doing th- six right. actions with this you're just getting four actions but, you know, they're really good for late game or, you know, if you just save them to the very end because if you're putting this on the very top of a stack and nobody else is placing on top of it, then 
you weren't going to get extra actions out of that disc anyways. Yeah, if it's if that is the last disc you place, that is a really good way to place that disc. Yes. If it's an early disc, it's a good way to get yourself onto the board quickly, to, like, to actually gather the resources and try and lock down a couple of these early game scoring rounds. Well, also, that's a wild for yeah. scoring, too. Yes. Because if that's on the okay. bottom... Yeah, so if that's on the bottom and somebody actually triggers it, so, you know, we get to the fourth disc, I place my disc on top, when that white one comes out, whoever triggered that action takes the white disc and replaces it with their own and puts it on the scoring, so you've essentially gained another white disc mm -hmm. for doing actions with, which is really cool that they did that. Like, it's... I don't know how to explain how cool it is. Besides, <laughs> it's really cool. Like, it gives this extra, like, do I want to play this now and give somebody else the possibility of stealing this disc and getting extra actions out of it? Or maybe possibly I can get it back? Or do mm -hmm. I save it to the very end and use it, you know, for gaining stuff at the end when there's, yeah, like, when, a lot when there's less... there's no risk of yeah. somebody else getting it. Um, it does make those discs really high risk, high reward. It's just another thing that is in this game that I think is unique. Um, now, granted, I am not the biggest Euro game player ever. So you may say, oh, I've seen a game where you put your action disc in between two things. And I've seen a game that has something similar. And, you know, obviously delivering stuff isn't that big of a deal. And I've seen a game with, you know, varying time on the scoring. Okay. I haven't. <laughs> Very unique to me. And the meld of those things are, like, I think it just works so well. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. Now, again, it's a dry, tasteless, bland Euro. It looks ugly on the board. I don't even like the name. <laughs> like, I, and I'm not just saying this for ha ha ha's. Like, no, I seriously would not have purchased this game probably prior to playing Guilds of London. I played Guilds of London, like, this looks dumb, but whatever. I'll, I'll play anything once. I'll try it out. You know, and I do my best to not judge a good book by its cover. I'm like, it's dumb, but okay, I'll give it a try. I got to come at it with open arms. And I was playing it, and I was like, this is so awesome. It's so much fun. I love all the card combos, and it has majority, and, you know, all this crazy stuff, and it looks so dumb, and nobody mm -hmm. would ever like. Like, I again, playing somebody who got into board gaming by playing Magic and Descent and Lord of the Rings Risk. And, and Munchkin. Munchkin and Star <laughs> Wars games, and, like, that kind of real crazy, you know, grab your sword and ah, this did not does not look appealing to me at all. And even I'm still that's one of my complaints. It's pretty bland. You didn't your complaint was that the cubes are resources. Well, my complaint is bland. If that so, is that is bland. Well, my complaint is that every part of this is bland. Yeah. But it's so much fun, so much fun. Highly, highly, highly recommend that you that if you're looking at this and you're going this does not look like a game I would like, try it. Try it once. So I really enjoy this game. I think it's a really clever way to put together the action selection kind of kind of worker placement uh, game. Uh, you know, you you can never block somebody out of the spot. You, if you go there, you're you know you're the first one there. You're gonna be taking those actions again. It's really interesting, and it changes every game. So like, there's no dominant like, okay, I'm always gonna go to this spot because I can get my brick and I can get my wood. On the next turn, I'll go over here, and then I can build you know, a shop, and then on the next turn, we go here. Like, it has always been different. Like, oh, well, now the brick and the wood are on the opposite sides, and the the building is over here, and it's not really next to anything that works well for the strategy I was going to go with. So you have to change your strategy every game. And you base that strategy not only on the actions, but you're looking at when things are going to score, and it's just a lot of fun. It's definitely very thinky. It's very crunchy, but not like overly complex like the actions you're taking are pretty simple but there's a lot of variety in them there's a lot of you know i like the area control feel of like taking over you know this you know the santa maria and they're like okay i'm gonna you know i'm gonna give them lots of wood i'm gonna like give them a lot of brick and now i pretty much lock that down when it scores i'm gonna get three points hey i secretly know that it's gonna score at the end of the game i get another five points like there's like a lot of conflict there there's not much player interaction in this game but in that what you were just talking about that builds a lot of conflict here mm -hmm. so if this sounds like a game that you're interested in or you know you, you want to try it we'll have a link in the description box down below where you can get yourself a copy and hey while you're down there don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you'll never be bored <clears throat> Got something else? Talk about these double discs. Oh, double discs! Double this game discs. is so good! <laughs>